you put that right back here.
Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Stephen, and I'm glad that you're all here today on this uh, final week of Easter as we remember the uh, ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven, assuring us of uh, salvation and where we'll be going through faith, um, as well as um, this blessed day of confirmation. We have six uh, um, wonderful young men and women uh, that will be um, uh, expressing their faith and confessing um, that the Lord Jesus Christ is indeed their Savior, and they desire to live in him. Uh, so thank you all for being here this morning, and may our worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to all of you. Amen. Our opening hymn is Take My Life That I May Be. gather to worship and receive the gifts of grace through word and sacrament, let us first confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We now pause for a moment to reflect on our sins and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you and others. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> that's my part, but that's okay. <clears throat> it's a good thing to say. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son has taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us in our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
We now continue with our psalmody. I will sing a refrain, uh, continue to play as the psalm is read, and then as the refrain is repeated, I would encourage you to sing along with me. <clears throat> Where you go, I will go. Where you stay shall be my home. For in your hope, my hope is found. Saved by grace through faith alone, you are my own. Lord, to you I commit my way. In your mercy grant me strength through days of pain. Never to your child <clears throat> trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the Lord trust in him and he will act the steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way though he fall he shall not be cast headlong for the Lord upholds his hand where you go, I will go. Where you stay shall be my home. For in your home, my hope is found. Saved by grace through faith alone, you are my own. Lord, to you. I commit my way, in your mercy grant me strength through days of pain. Never urge me leave your side, redeem me Lord, be faithful to your child. I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously, and his children become a blessing. Turn away from evil and do good, so shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, shall be my home, for in your home, my hope is found, saved by grace through faith alone, you are my own, Lord to you, I commit my way, in your mercy grant me strength through days of pain. Never urge me leave your side. Redeem me, Lord, be faithful to your child. Morning. Good morning. The epistle today is from Ephesians chapter 1. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks to you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, 
according to the working of his great might, that he believed, I'm sorry, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifted up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for the sermon hymn.
I'd now like to welcome the children forward for the children's message. Seat right here. Right there. You can do that. You want to go on the piano? <laughs> he can sit with you. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Good morning. It's good to have you here today in church. So today, We remember the ascension of Jesus into heaven. And that means that Jesus went up into heaven. And his disciples actually got to see him go. Now, you've seen people go before, right? When uh, your mom or dad goes to work, do you start crying and saying, Oh, I'll never see them again. No, probably not, right? How about uh, when when, uh, you go to school? Do they say, Oh, again? No, they don't do that either. How about with friends? Do you ever do that with friends? No? Why is that? Why don't you cry? Because you know they're coming back, right? You know they're coming back, right? Just like they promised. They promised, I'll be back. And they come back, right? And that's what happened with Jesus. Jesus went up into heaven, but he's not gone forever. You know what? He's going to come back in the same way someday. We don't know when. Maybe we'll still be here. Maybe we'll already be with him in heaven. But Jesus is going to come back to earth and he's going to take all who believe in him to live with him forever in heaven. And we know this is true because God always keeps his promises. So though sometimes we wish that Jesus was right here, standing right in front of us, we know that he's still with us, right? In our hearts when we believe. And we also trust in his promise that someday he's going to return again. Remember, Jesus loves you, and everyone here loves you, too. Have a good week. And if you go right back there, you can get some Easter crosses made out of chocolate. There's a lot of them, and Easter's over, over, so grab as many as you want. You're welcome, Mom and Dad. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for this Ascension Sunday comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, as just read. As well as this question, which our confirmands will answer this day. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? To which we all, with them, in spirit, ought humbly respond, I do, by the grace of God. This final week of the Easter season will be concluding our Easter sermon series entitled, Easter Changes Everything. And we'll be doing so by remembering that Jesus' ascension into heaven grants us divine confirmation of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Thus, through faith in the life we've been given by Christ, in death, we too shall arise in Christ. This morning, we will see that in the eyes of God, your life was a life worth making. And a life worth making is a life worth saving. And a life worth saving is a life worth living. So let's begin. First, we see the value of life, because all people have been created in the image of God, in his likeness. As David wrote in Psalm 139, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This means that even based just solely on your existence, the Lord deemed your life. A life worth making. And this is true of every person. Every life wonderfully made by God is intimately known and inherently valuable. There may be unplanned pregnancies, but there's no such thing as an accidental baby. 
As we grow older, our bodies and abilities may suffer, but never our worth or our value. Every age and stage of life has a purpose, and our lives are precious and meaningful. Even in difficulty and suffering, every day is a gift. Every life is a blessing. When the truth that all lives are created equal and actually made in the likeness of God Almighty, when that is taken out of the equation, the end result is always negative. Any culture that deems existence to be happenstance and life cheap pays a great price for this belief, and the steep cost is devastating. Eventually, aimlessness leads to anxiety and restlessness. This leads to self-loathing, depression, substance abuse, sexual depravity, and hopelessness, which leads to hatred, anger, slander, and resentment. And finally, retaliation and violence. The youngest are aborted or abandoned, the oldest forgotten or neglected, and the rest are at constant war, either with themselves or others, because homicide and suicide are abundant in a dying world full of sin and sorrow, yet nothing to live for. Naturally, when we as human beings feel we have nothing to offer, sooner or later we may surrender and just give up. So if our life's philosophy is simply to live for the moment, what happens when that moment sucks? What might happen when life gets tough? Unfortunately, nothing good. Because our understanding of the value of human life in general directly correlates as to whether or not we deem life worth living on every level. But truly, life is sacred. Forsaking it is a sin. And certainly all of us are guilty of sin. Not just this one in many, one way or another, but countless others, all deserving of condemnation. Thus, we need a savior that we may not falter and despair, but rather hope and rejoice in the forgiveness promised and the new way to true life our loving Lord gives. We're often told to make for ourselves a life worth living. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with being ambitious and striving to improve our station in life to provide for our families. But in reality, our lives are worth living because we were made by God Almighty. As long as we live, as long as we're alive, we have cause to rejoice, and our lives ought reflect the value of salvation. In sin, we can waste our time and misuse our lives, but there's no such thing as a useless life. And in the eyes of our merciful God, any life worth making in his image is also worth redeeming for his glory and restoring to his image. Which brings us to our next point, a life worth saving. After humanity's fall into sin, we were declared unworthy of being in God's presence, and a punishment was given. That punishment was death, the price of sin. However, a new promise was also given, that a Savior would come and make us alive again in Him. In Luke 10, Jesus was asked this question, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And in response, Jesus asked him what God's law said, to which the man answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Then Jesus said, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. Essentially, this means that we are to love God first, above anything, and before anybody else, and with all of ourselves. Of course, in sin we can't do this, at least not perfectly, which is the requirement to live. On our own, we cannot keep God's law, we can't live up to his righteous standard for living, and the result of failing to do so is death. And that's exactly what each and every one of us deserves. However, 
God is merciful. Furthermore, he made you. And in the eyes of God, a life worth making is a life worth saving. Thus God's perfect love was shown for us, though undeserving. As it says in 1 John 4, In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Jesus died a death he didn't deserve in order to give us a life that we could not earn. All this pain and shame was pure grace for us. The law was fulfilled in the gospel of Jesus Christ, his life-giving body and blood for our redemption. Thus, the right question to ask is not, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? But rather, what good deed has Christ done to give eternal life? The correct answer is always the cross. And so we trust in the grace of Jesus. As it says in Hebrews 12, we should always be looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus endured the agony of crucifixion to forgive your sins, not begrudgingly, but willingly. He knew that his death would not be in vain, that through his suffering, today's sorrow would give way to tomorrow's joy. Despite all of the distress and violence we currently see, the currency of human life is not inflated. It's still just as valuable as it was at Calvary. The world and every single person in it is still worth just as much as it did back then in Jerusalem when Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins. And God offers salvation to everyone because he desires everyone to be saved. He wants each person made in his image to turn from sin toward him and have a life worth living both here on earth and forever in heaven. He would give anything to make this a reality, which is why he did exactly that. He gave everything, including his own body and blood, his life and love for us. Our life's worth is not determined by what we earn. It's determined by what Christ paid. To quote Martin Luther, because Christ has bestowed this great blessing on you, you dare not imagine that it was done for nothing or cost little or comes to you because of your merit. Sin and death were overcome for you in him and through him. Grace and life were given you, but it meant bitter work for him. It cost him much. He earned it at the greatest expense with his own body, blood, and life, paying for sin. The true value of anything is not what someone wants from it. It's what one is willing to pay for it. The higher the cost, the greater the value. And Jesus has paid the price of sin and death on the cross to redeem your life, which shows you how much he loves you. Giving everything proves that there is nothing more valuable to Jesus Christ than saving your eternal soul. He paid the highest cost, and his sacrifice grants us a second chance to live free from sin and death and the devil's tyranny. Returning to the captivity of sin makes a mockery of the price he paid and the liberty he won in his victory over death and the grave. Indeed, heroes are honored by the lives of those they've saved. Jesus is the savior of the world. He deserves endless praise. And faith is the highest praise there is. Jesus saw the cross as a death worth dying because he saw your life as a life worth saving. And when we view our lives in that way, through the eyes of God, this changes everything about the way we live. Which brings us to our third point, a life worth living. Our lives are desperately in need of meaning, which means having something to live for. And having something to live for means having something worth dying for. As Jesus said in Matthew 16, 
If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Having purpose is priceless. It makes life worth living. And we have this in Christ. Clearly, your life is valuable. Jesus gave everything just to have you. That's the truth. And what we do with this good news, that matters. As it says in Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. With Memorial Day just a week away, I'm reminded of an interview I saw a while back in which they were interviewing a veteran on his 100th birthday. But he was lamenting our culture's uh, direction and the way that it was heading, and he was actually weeping. I don't know if you've ever seen a 100-year-old man cry before and weep, but it was pretty heartbreaking. And the reason he was crying is because though many of his friends died to preserve it, he felt as if our country was going to hell in a handbasket. And it was pretty hard to watch. So how must our Lord feel every time a person in our world actually goes to hell? Because it happens every day as lives are ended by heart attacks, car accidents, gun violence, and countless other ways. We all have neighbors who Jesus fought and died for, and yet they do not know him. Many in our world are going to hell, not figuratively in a handbasket, but literally, spiritually, for all eternity, in wooden caskets. For those of us in sincere faith, this thought alone ought to bring tears to our eyes, for there is nothing in this world more tragic than the loss of eternal life. And so we ask the Holy Spirit that he may inspire us to witness, that we may follow in the footsteps of our Master and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he would make us willing to lay down our lives for the sake of Christ and the lives of all he died to save. When someone gives their life to save you, it changes you. It shows that they viewed your life as a life worth living, thus a life they were willing to shed blood and die for. This, of course, is what our Lord has done for us. If we continue in sin, carrying on exactly as we were before in an unworthy manner and ignore his sacrifice, we are living in a way that says the life he gave for us on the cross was worthless. However, if we remember and ponder and reflect and repent and move forward in joy and thanksgiving for his forgiveness, we live our lives by his grace and strength in a way that is worthy of the gospel of salvation. Therefore, we live our lives in honor and gratitude to him who died to save us. And we share his word with all in this world who are willing to hear. That's our mission, both personally and corporately as the body of Christ, to humbly seek the lost and lay down our lives for others, all for the sake of Christ our crucified and risen Lord and Savior. Christ is risen. His grave is defeated. Certainly, the gravest sin of all is to live a faithless life as if he never left it, as if there's no resurrection from the dead. Rather, we should live our lives as if it's the only thing that matters, because in the end, it is. And furthermore, we can by the grace of God. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus shares some final life advice for life here on earth with his disciples before his ascension into heaven. And it is still just important for all of us here today as it was for his disciples then. So when they had come together, that's his disciples, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What the disciples are really asking here is, when? How long? How long before you deliver us from the suffering of these earthly tribulations and trials? 
How long, Lord, before we finally have peace in life? And Jesus answered, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. And so Jesus says, Eventually. It is not our place to know the exact time. Simply to know that eventually all life shall be restored when he returns. Then Jesus directs their attention back to the present. He says to remain focused on their heavenly work on earth, to be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and all the rest of the world. Furthermore, he says that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit to help them, not only to believe and live in him, but also to witness and live for him. As Jesus ascends, he essentially says, keep your feet on the ground, Remain faithful to the task which I have given and blessed you to do in my name. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Now in Luke 24, after Jesus' resurrection, some of his followers were perplexed and just stood there, staring into the empty tomb. Then behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. The men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Likewise in Acts 1, after Jesus' ascension, his followers were perplexed and just stood there gazing into the empty heavens. Then behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who is taken from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So essentially, after Jesus' resurrection, the angels said to his followers, Don't just stand there dwelling on the past. The grave's empty. Jesus has risen. Start living today in him. And after Jesus' ascension, the angels said to his followers, Don't just stand there wondering about the future. Christ is reigning in heaven and shall be returning. Start living today in him. As it says in 1 John 5, God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Not had life or will have life, but has life. Christ is risen. Jesus is living. And all who have faith in him have life today and always. Nothing can change the fact that Christ is alive and we have blessedly been called to be his witnesses. We can look back to Good Friday and say with confidence, it is finished, and ahead to the last day and say as it says in Revelation, so shall it be. But every day we can say with certainty, Christ is living and so are we. And better yet, not just now, but eternally. God's word makes it very clear that though there are many ways to live on earth, there's only one way to live forever. Someday, each and every one of us will stop breathing. But as long as we believe in Jesus, we will never cease living. Our time on earth here is short, so we should consider our priorities and strive to spend what little time we have on what's truly important, living, worshiping, and witnessing for the Lord. Because when Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, he assured that we too shall arise in Christ. And he confirmed where we'll be going. Saved by grace through faith, we shall follow him, even in ascension, up into heaven, unto life everlasting. God is with you always, even to the end of the age, and he shall come again to judge both the living and the dead. So may your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. For by his grace, glory is waiting. In the end, most of us want our lives to matter, to make a difference, to leave behind a worthy legacy. If we want our lives to matter, we should share the gospel of Christ, which is the only thing that matters for life. If we want to make a difference, 
We should repent, flee from sin, and ask God to grant us the strength, wisdom, and courage to live differently than this world, bringing honor to Him. If we want to leave a worthy legacy, we must believe in the only one who is truly and eternally worthy and merciful. And then we shall never be forgotten. Our names will be written, for he- written in heaven, and there will be endless life in he who ascended for us. God not only made us, he saved us. Our life's worth is found in Christ's work, and a life in Christ is a life worth living. Therefore, in love, in courage, in peace, in service, in faith, and in life, let us arise in Christ, trusting in the confirmation of our home in heaven, proclaimed in his glorious ascension. Remember, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And Easter changes everything. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. I would now like to invite our confirmands forward as we proceed with the rite of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes. Do you renounce the devil? Yes. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, the Jewish God died in the Lord. He was sent into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. And he was seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death. I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized, and have received the teaching of the Lord, You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins as you continue to hear the word, the Lord's word, and receive his blessed sacrament. He who has begun a good work in you 
will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Tyler John Albert, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Tyler, hear now the word of the Lord, as you have selected from 1 Timothy 4.12, and be encouraged. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and purity. Talen Marie Albert, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. David, hear now the word of our Lord, as you have selected from Joshua 1 9, and be encouraged. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Christo Christopher Cole Falkman, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Call here now the word of our Lord as you are selected from Romans 8.25 and be encouraged. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Jameson Farrell Jones the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Jameson, now hear the word of our Lord as you have selected from Matthew 26, 28, and be encouraged. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Dylan Jackson Weiner, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Dylan, hear now the word of our Lord as you have selected from 1 John 4, 19, and be encouraged. We love, before, we love because he first loved us. Anna Joy Wright, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. And I hear now the word of our Lord as you have selected from Isaiah 41.10, and be encouraged. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies 
to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God be with you always. Amen. Amen. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, heavenly King, once again, you have gathered us before your presence. Grant that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives and gaze upon your beauty manifested here in your word and sacrament. Graciously hear our prayers as we now gather in your temple. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our protector and savior, look in mercy upon those suffering persecution for the sake of your name. Many have been forsaken even by father, mother, and friend. Take them into your keeping. Hear their cries and do not let them be afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all nations, since it is your will that we would pray for all in authority, we believe with confidence that you hear our prayers on behalf of our president, governor, congress, legislature, and judges. Teach them the testimony of truth, that they may be wise and effective in their offices. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, you have testified that eternal life is given in your Son, that whoever has him has life. You also promise that you will hear whatever we ask according to your will. Hear now our prayers for all who are sick and in distress, and especially we lift up before you your continued blessings over Kelly and his family as they're on a mission trip to Uganda. We pray for your continued prayers of healing and strength for Gary, Barbara, Mitchell, Dawn, Kelsey, Mary Lou, Linda, Cliff, Betsy, TJ, Kaz, Doug, Joe, Edna, Raymond, Jake, Carol, Melissa, Jen, Marion, Mary, Dave, Tom, Kim, Joan, Billy, Arthur, Christina, Angel, Tony and Alan, all being treated for cancer. We pray for the Lord's blessings over Ray, Lynn, Ken, Don, Brian, Paul, Charles, Karen, Jason, Nicole, Krista, Lisa, Pris, Susan, Diane, Pat, Alex, and Tom. And Heavenly Father, we name other names before before you that need healing or need your presence. We lift them up before you now. Well, Lord, we ask for your blessings over our children for protection. Be with the students that are finishing up this school year, Lord God. Be with the college students that are completing up their college exams and are on their way home. We ask for your covering to be upon them, Lord. Heal them and give them life to those who hold your son in faithful hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, accept the prayers we offer through your son, our Savior, and keep us forever in your name and word, that we may be one just as you are one. Sanctify us, sanctify us in the truth as we pray for the words Jesus, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for announcements.
you should all have received a bulletin when you first come in. Please take that bulletin home with you because there are many announcements in there we want everyone to be a part of. And in two weeks, we have our Hope Day here on our property. And our Hope Day is that uh, we're going to be handing out food, Bible tracts, and other things. And uh, you are needed to be here to bless those families that will come and uh, be a part of this day. Gift cards are needed, as you see in the bulletin. Gift cards are needed because we want to bless those people that are coming that have needs. On June 10th and 17th, we have two memorial services. John Galeer on June 10th at 11 o'clock, and the following week, the 17th, a memorial service for Tony Riggio. In the bulletin, it says, Martha's helpers. Ladies, you are Martha. You are Martha, ladies. Your help is needed to uh, make a cold salad or dessert. Please see uh, my wife, Ronnie, right afterwards uh, in, the, uh, in Zola Hall, and so we can get you signed up so everybody can be a part of that day. And after worship uh, on the moral service, we'll be gathering for food. You also see it as a country, uh, country line dancing and chili work, uh, work, chili. If you can make chili and you're good at it, let's see how good it is. Listen, we're flying in a special person for the country line dancing. He's coming in from Florida. He's like the best it is in Florida we hear. Oh, Duke is here. Duke is here. He's going to be leading us in country line. Please be a part of that day. And uh, yes. Look at that, Duke, huh? They know about you. They know about you. Uh, you've all should have received the worship fellowship card when you come in. Please fill that out. And you heard the prayers that were going out? Please, we gather up, the elders gather up with pastor every Wednesday. And if there are prayer concerns, we lift those prayers up to the Lord. Please join us afterwards for fellowship. You're all invited for fellowship. You come to worship, come down to fellowship here. There's cake and coffee for you. And uh, there's a youth bake sale. And I'm sure there's some kind of goodie you can buy to take home. Be blessed. We worship our Lord now with our offering. Please rise for the operatory. Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it 
and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We continue with the Agnes Day.
above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what
mortal man would dare to stand before your throne before the Holy One of Heaven It's only by your blood and it's only through your mercy Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn for this morning is a hymn of glory. Let us sing.
and serve the Lord.